Hello, this is Bridget Rao with Divine Essentials. Okay guys, I have Divine Masculine's Confessions and Divine Feminine's Confessions here. So we're going to do like a little conversation back and forth to see what you both want to say to each other. So take what resonates, leave the rest with this. We have three different piles for you to choose from to figure out which conversation is yours. And I have three different Labradorites for you to choose from. So the first one here is like this... Um, Kind of like a teardrop, diamondy, shaped type of thingy. I don't know what to call it, but it's Labradorite, and that's why it's here, because Labradorite's my favorite. And then we have the moon, Labradorite. So this is like the moon shape. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And then we have the regular, you know, what do you call it? I can't think of the name. Cab. Lab cab. This is a lab cab, and it's just in a regular cab shape. So, choose which one of these feels appropriate for you. I'm going to set you up right here. I'm still struggling. Still struggling to be alive, but I'm doing my best. And we're going to start off at 127. And we have Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine's Confessions here. So we'll start off with one from the Masculine and then we'll do one from the Feminine, okay? So Masculine says, if I could stay, I would. So I feel like this person has come and gone in and out of your life. And they are say saying, like, if I could just stay around, I would. I would stick it out. I would stay with you. I would be there. But there's obviously some reason that this person can't stick around or can't, you know, stay with you for some reason. And you say, sometimes I wish I could just hate you, but I can't. So Divine Feminine wants to hate the masculine, but she can't, you know. And it's like, it might be easier if, it, if you could, you know, like when they come and go, when they ghost you, when they disappear on you, when they, you know get you going and get your all emotions connected to them and then they just kind of disappear on you it would be easier to just hate them but you can't and he says I still have no idea what to say to you so I feel like he's wanting to say something to you but he has no idea what to say to you right now so it's like if I could stay I would if I knew what to say I would you know I just don't know what to do when it comes to you so there's something going on with this person where they have some sort of blockage when it comes to communicating, when it comes to sticking around. And she says, I want to open up sexually with you. My past traumas make me hold back from really giving over every piece of me to you. I know you felt something missing or wrong. So this is for my divine feminines that have probably been through either sexual or physical or emotional trauma. And when it comes to opening up to this man who's having a hard time, communicating with you, having a hard time sticking around, you may have a hard time fully giving yourself over. You know, I'm sure you can give yourself to this person. I'm sure you want to talk to this person more, give more, you know, make love more, do all of those freaky deaky fun things. But because they hold back, it probably makes you hold back. And because you've been hurt, it probably doesn't help things. Um, so, you know, take that if it resonates. I feel like for some of you, you probably are okay with, like, just pouring everything out to this person. But for some of you, it may be hard for you to pour it out in the physical. Maybe it's easier for you to, like, send them messages, you know, like, to, to um, I know for myself, it's easier for me to write than it is for me to, like, sit down and look at you face to face and talk. And that's because of past trauma. So everybody heals from their traumas differently. Everybody has different ways of coping with their trauma. But I feel like if you've had any type of trauma, it has impacted the way that you are with them. And then he says, I see so many signs and synchronicity since I've met you. So this person, you know, that your masculine is seeing a lot of confirmation, a lot of synchronicity, a lot of, you know, the 1111, maybe they're seeing your name places. They're just seeing a lot of signs, a lot of that synchronistic stuff that you probably see as well. Um, and it's increased since they've met you. Okay. So I had to put my headphones on and put the AC on because it's very hot where I live. And I want you to be able to hear me. 444, four, four, as I said that. You're in the Divine Feminine says, Is there anything I can do to please you? Just let me know. So Divine Feminine wants to please the masculine. She wants to know what he wants. And I feel like 
that's again maybe one of the issues that you guys have is communicating with each other being open with each other letting each other know what it is you do want what it is you don't like what it is you know that's going to make you feel good that's going to make you feel seen it's going to you know open you guys up on a sexual level an emotional level a physical level and he says i've awoken because of our love and have sought out guidance for our path together so not only has he been seeing the synchronicity but he's been awakened by this connection with you and has looked for guidance now that could be you know watching readings that could be asking friends and family but definitely trying to figure out what the right thing to do with, with this connection you know um, so I definitely feel like this masculine has gone through some sort of awakening some sort of like um, spiritual you know revelation when it comes to this they may be even knowing that this is their twin flame or soulmate or something like that and they're trying to figure out what to do and she says I've never been like this before I'm addicted to your love give me more <laughs> so um, you've probably never been like this before you know like you've never had this intensity with somebody if they were to you know show up in your life and ghost you'd probably be like well screw you um, if it, you know you had some sort of connection with people in the past it probably wasn't as intense as this one has been um, this may be something that just kind of lingers with you and just you can't get enough of it so definitely feels like twin flame type of energy and he says I'm afraid to open up fully in love so it feels like there's some mirroring here it feels like you hold back some stuff you're afraid he's afraid he can't open up fully you can't open up fully so there's a lot of stuff here that's just kind of mirroring and I feel like he wants to but he's afraid to and then we have sometimes I question if you're just a karmic lesson but the universe keeps telling me you're not so divine feminine is getting a lot of synchronicity a lot of confirmation about this connection she you know probably asks herself is this just a lesson is this just karmic in nature is this something I should just let go of and asks the universe to guide her to give her confirmation and she keeps getting told that it's like her twin flame or she keeps getting shown you know signs and synchronicity that this isn't just something that's bad for her this is something that's helping her to grow something that's making her you know maybe open up those wounds and look deeper at them heal stuff that she maybe never would have otherwise wanted to until meeting this person so he says you're so amazing it's intimidating so I feel like because of the intensity with this connection because you're so amazing to this person it's intimidating to them and they have a hard time opening up fully with you they have a hard time expressing what they want to say it's like I don't even know what to say I don't even know what to do you know I'm awakening because of you I'm seeing these signs because of you I want to stick around but I don't know how to so I don't think it's anything personal with this person that's like you know choosing to just ignore you or run from you or ghost you it's that they're intimidated by this intensity you know this awakening that they're going through it's just a lot for them to handle and she says you have the key to my heart so you know there's nobody else out there for her there's nobody else out there that has that key to her heart you know if anybody's going to be able to get her to open up fully it's going to be this person but it's probably going to be when he opens up fully so again there may be some healing and some work to do within this connection and he says it was love at first sight and my first true love nobody can take that away from us so he's may have had other loves before you or you know he may have known love but I feel like this is the first true love that he's had and in the minute he saw you he felt that love so this is something that was like an instant connection an instant recognition and she says everything you do is perfect to me so she finds him to be perfect there's nothing he can do wrong you know there's nothing that he's ever gonna be able to like do that will make her hate him or you know despise him or see him in a bad light and he says I know when you're upset with me and it bothers me more than you could possibly know so she sees him as perfect everything he does is good but you know there's times where she gets upset and it's probably because he doesn't say everything he holds back he doesn't stick around he kind of disappears so when you get upset it bothers him because he does feel like you know you look at him in a good way you see him as being this you know devoted person that you're devoted to them and you have all this love for them 
so when they mess up and they hurt you, it really does bother them. They don't like that feeling that you are mad at them or that you're frustrated or upset with them. So they definitely can feel the shift in your energy when you go from being like, oh, you're so perfect to, ah, you're making me mad. And, he, and she says, every time I think about giving up and moving on, you show back up and reset my emotions and love. It's like you know. So when he ghosts and disappears, she starts to heal over time. She starts to say, okay, enough's enough. I guess I'm going to give up on this. I'm going to move on. I don't know what else to do. And then all of a sudden, here he comes again, resetting her feelings, resetting those emotions, coming back in because he can feel or sense that she's about ready to like give up and move on. And it's like he knows on some level. He, and, he, and men and women that are connected like this can feel each other. They can literally feel when you pull your energy off of them. And that's why I always say, you know, make sure that you're not putting all of your energy all over this person because it's going to push them away from you. If you want them to show up in your life, focus on yourself. Live your best life. Don't be sitting around, you know, crying and feeling sad and waiting for this person to return because that's going to be like the opposite of what's going to happen. When you focus on yourself, you know, you give space for this person to come back in. Um, and if it hasn't been healthy, you know, like if it's not a twin flame, if you're not getting signs that show you that it's, you know, a twin flame that it's helping you grow, then maybe it is time to move on and take care of yourself. And if they keep showing up only when you're giving up, there may, that could be a sign of something, you know, that there's like narcissism involved or there's something toxic involved that you want to look at, you know, and just always try to have that, that healthy thing within these connections because sometimes it is a divine thing and sometimes it is a karmic thing and you've got to be the one that's responsible for what's good for you. So he says, I'm in denial about my intimacy issues and fears of being used and abused. So that's probably what this all comes down to is that this person is, you know, having intimacy issues, they're having fears, they're, they're afraid of being abused, they don't want to be used, they may have already been through something really difficult in another relationship and so it causes them to not know what to say to you, it causes them to kind of disappear on you and it probably causes you to feel all types of ways. But I definitely feel like that's something they need to face and then you probably got your own stuff to face. And she says, I will wait until you're ready to talk to me again. I'm not trying to push you or trap you. I care about what you want. So because he disappears and because he, you know, ghosts and runs and things like that, in the past she may have chased after him. She may have been in the chaser energy like, just love me, just pay attention to me, just please, please, please. You know, can't control herself sending messages, doing things that was just kind of crazy. And I feel like now she's at this place of being like, all right, if you want to go, I'll let you go. I'm not trying to control you. I'm not trying to push you or trap you. I know what you, you know, want. And if what you want right now is to kind of disappear and go off on your own, then I'm going to let you. I'm not going to stay here and be somebody that tries to trap you and, and be crazy with it. So he says, I'm gathering courage to reach out to you. So because you're giving him that space, because you're not chasing after him, he's going to be able to face his fears and come to you. And she says, I deserve closure. So for some of you, you may just want closure. And for others of you, it's like you need closure on that chapter. You need to close out the chapter of difficulties. Like, let's talk about why you've disappeared. Let's talk about why you don't know what to say to me. Let's talk about why you come and go. Let's talk about whatever. You know, I deserve some sort of closure here. If you're not going to come back to be with me, I want you to at least say goodbye to me so that I can let this chapter go of my life and move on because you deserve to be able to move on if they're not coming back to be with you, right? So I feel like that's where she's at right now and she's not chasing him down. She's not, you know, begging for his time, energy and attention. She's just doing her own thing and trying to take care of her stuff and he's trying to gather the courage he needs to reach out to her and either give her that closure or give to her what she actually deserves so that this can go in a healthy connection, in a healthy way. So let me see what comes through really quickly for your um, timing. We have 444, angelic support, divine alignment foundations. So I feel like this is something that you have, you know, a divine alignment within the foundation. There's something here that's like divinely protected and guided and everything will probably come together for you when it's meant to. They also on the bottom of the deck say, yesterday came, tomorrow will too, it's time to decide what will you do. 
So I think it's time for you to decide, like, am I moving on or am I waiting for this person? Am I, you know, looking for closure or am I looking to continue this connection with this person? Like, what type of foundation do I want in this connection? Do I want to heal this or do I want to, you know, start moving on? And they say in the light of the sun, it will all be done. So this summer will be helpful for you guys to figure out what it is you're doing and open a book, take a look. The answers you seek will come this week. So this is like looking deeper into this stuff, like looking deeper into your attachment stuff, looking into the stuff about, you know, like why you are the way you are in love, why you like what type of love language you have, what type of attachment style you have, you know, really looking into that stuff helps because if you're somebody with an anxious avoidant, you know, thing going on and, and if they're the avoidant, you're the anxious attachment style, like those two things, one of you, just one of you knowing that and one of you healing that can make a huge difference in the way that you show up to each other. Um, and then there's fearful avoidant where it's like sometimes we have fears about opening up. Sometimes we have fears that are getting mirrored to us by this person. So you could both be fearful avoidant or you could both be, you know, in an energy of anxious attachment styles or, you know, you could both have love languages that are different from each other. It's really important to look into stuff on the 3D level as well as the 5D level. I think a lot of people get caught up in the like, if I just embody unconditional love, everything will be okay. But you need to figure out the 3D because you're living in the 3D world with a 3D person. So as much as that awakening to the spiritual connection is important to get to a 3D union, you need to understand the 3D stuff and you need to heal you know, and be accepting of what you're dealing with. If you're dealing with somebody that's an avoidant person, it's going to be a lot of work. But if you really care about them, you can make it work. But it's you're going to have to be very patient and put a lot of energy and effort into it. And if this is your true twin flame and you remember your story and why you came, you know, you can awaken on deeper levels like through the consciousness, through healing, through meditating and all of that but you still want to look deeper into like what what's showing up in the 3D and how to approach it in the 3D levels so that you're not wasting a bunch of time doing stuff that doesn't work. They're saying tomorrow is another day, try again another way. Whatever you've been doing up until this point may not be working for you or you'd already be where you're meant to be, right? So you may even have to just look at your energy and be like, am I being the feminine? Am I being receptive? Am I doing what I'm meant to do? Or am I too confused? Am I asking too many questions? Am I chasing after this person energetically? Because even just watching readings is checking up on their energy. So if you're constantly thinking about them, constantly checking up on them, constantly, you know, um, checking their social accounts, checking out what what's going on in their life, then you're in chase or energy. So you want to bring that back and you know focus on yourself, be receptive and nurturing, but not to the point where it's like this is the only thing you're nurturing is this connection okay so hopefully that made some sense for you guys looks like you can figure these things out over this summer if you really you know start looking deeper into the 3d and the 5d connection here and we just had summer solstice so that's the time to start you know balancing your mind stop wasting time stop procrastinating allow for the reconciling reconciling of the past to happen surrender into a new chapter and know that your spiritual foundation with this divine masculine is protected. And when you stop and look around, all that you want will be found. A year from today, you will be on your way. You'll have a whole new story to tell. For some of you, you might get that closure. For some of you, you might be with this person. But it's, it's dependent on what is really good for you and what is meant to happen. And I think you'll start seeing those results and awakening that infinite like awakened expansion expansiveness that you can have with this over the next you know couple of weeks and months if you decide to do what is right for you and start looking into you know meditating doing what's right for you doing you know the 3d and 5d stuff for some of you it's like instead of waiting go out on a date for some of you it's looking at where you're out of alignment and you know manifesting and healing in your own life separate from this person can bring you into alignment with this person for some of you it may be time to get that closure without getting the closure from them just accepting that they're you know whatever is happening here is out of alignment and just start moving on with your life and having a progression of love 
you know, in a getting an awakening partnership somewhere else, you know, if that's, if that's what you feel like you're ready to do, then that may be something to look into. But for everybody, it's going to be different, you know, so right now, prepare yourself, you know, start collecting things in your basket, get yourself ready before you blow a gasket, and reconcile the past so you can open up a new chapter, where it's either this person comes back in and you guys are good, or you guys move on and find somebody that is meant to be there. But for many of you, it feels like somebody here is meant to be there. It's a good connection for you. It's helping you to grow. It's helping you to learn. And once you start you know, doing that, things will get easier for you in both levels, physically and energetically. So I'm going to move on to number two with the moon. And you're welcome to stick around if you like. 20, 40... All right, so we have Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, and we're going to see what's going on between these two. So Divine Masculine says, every song I hear reminds me of you. It doesn't matter where I am or who I'm with, you always come to mind when I hear certain lyrics. So this person, you and this person may communicate a lot through music or telepathically. There could be a lot of telepathic communication that happens between the two of you. But I feel like there's certain songs that really trigger this person to think about you or certain lyrics and songs that really trigger them to think about you. It may be stuff that they have heard you say or just feelings that they have felt within this connection. But they definitely, you know, are getting a lot of reminders she says, I just want to strip down and bear it all, my heart, my soul, my body, my mind, everything. So she's ready to give over all of herself to him. She may have had to hold back up until this point because he's holding back or, you know, because of whatever's gone on in her life. But she definitely wants to give, you know, over every part of herself to him. And he says, let's take a ride and explore each other's bodies. So he could be feeling a little freaky deaky, wanting to kind of explore things with you, wanting to get to that body, mind, and soul with you, feeling like, hey, I don't mind exploring each other. Let's, let's bear it all. Um, so there is some mirroring there. And she says, I've looked at other girls' profiles that you talk to. What about them do you like? So there's a little bit of jealousy here with this feminine um, she could have seen him talk to somebody on social media or saw some girl liked his stuff or he liked her stuff or whatever. And so she's like, what do you like about that? So that might be a behavior you want to check on and be like, why am I doing that? Because it could just be a friend. It could just be somebody that, you know, they don't even know, you know, so try to not do that to yourself. Or if you do check out their profile, like, you know, maybe they're married, maybe they already have somebody in their life. And it, like I said, it's just a friend. Just try not to always go to that place of, he liked her stuff. It must mean this because it's probably not true. And then he says, the fact you even give me the time of day blows my mind. So the fact that you even talk to this person or think about this person on these levels blows his mind. So it feels like you both have a little bit of that, like, um, I'm not good enough for you type of thing. Like, you know, you're checking out their front, their profiles of people that they're talking to and they're blowing, their mind is blown that you're even thinking about them in those ways. So there may be some value and worth, you know, issues here within this connection. And she says, thank you for inspiring me to heal and grow. I've changed so much because of you. So maybe in the beginning you did those types of behaviors. Maybe in the beginning you were a little bit more, you know, crazy about like who they're talking to, what they're doing, where they're at and all of that stuff. And over time, you could have gotten a little bit more healthier and changed and have grown a lot because of this connection. And he says, I've never been so turned on in all my life like I am with you. So he's definitely having some of those desires come through right now. Definitely feels a lot of, you know, freaky deaky stuff when it comes to you. And she says, I just, I want us to get more comfortable in all ways so I can play out my fantasies with you someday. Let's get naughty. So she's mirroring here you know, with that type of let's get freaky deaky energy, let's get naughty. I want us to get more comfortable because when you get comfortable and bare at all, you know, you, you can do things that you normally wouldn't do or you start feeling more comfortable in ways that you don't normally feel comfortable with somebody. But it takes time to build that connection. And it's like every time these people ghost and disappear, it's like you got to reset it. And it's like you start over from scratch. It's like, oh, those same nerves that were there like the last time you saw them are there again because they spent so much time being gone. So I feel like you have a hard time, you know, 
bearing it all to this person, but you want to, and they want to do this stuff, but I feel like with you, you can't do it until you get to know them better or until you feel more comfortable with them. And he says, I'm truly in love with every piece of you. So he does, you know, enjoy everything about you. You know, he has a lot of love for you. Every piece of you feels good to him. And she says, I'm sorry if I came on too strong. I just really liked you. So I, like I was saying, you may have been a little bit different in the beginning of this. You could have been somebody that was like very much in that chaser energy, like, where are you? What are you doing? Please talk to me. I love you. I miss you. You know, let me do this. Let me do that. Let me, whatever, whatever it was that was going on. I feel like you came on a little too strong in the beginning and that could have pushed them away. And he says, I promise I'm coming home. Don't give up on me. So even if you were, you know, crazy in the beginning, he is going to come back around to you. He says, don't give up on me. He feels like you're a part of his home. So, you know, that's, that's a very good thing. He's very much in love with you. And she says, loving you is the best and worst thing I've ever done. So I feel like it's been very difficult for her, but it's also been good for her. It's taught her to grow. It's taught her to heal. It's taught her, you know, good and bad. It's, it's basically duality, which is what these connections are about. So, you know, as much as it sucked, it's also been good for her. And he says, I recognize myself inside of you. So he does recognize himself inside of this divine feminine. And I feel like, you know, there's things there that mirror. There's things there that make him feel certain things that are connected to himself. And she says, the best D I've ever had, do me soon, I need it bad. So I feel like you both have that physical desire for each other right now. Um, he may be like, I recognize myself inside of you, like physically, like wanting to get physically inside of you. Um, but I definitely feel like there's a heavy, heavy physical connection between the both of you. And he says, I dream about you almost every night. I hate waking up to find you aren't here. So he could be having dreams like you're already in the bed with him and when he wakes up and you're not there, it's like, ugh, I wish you were. And she says, I only want to please you. So I feel like her, she may have her mind set on one thing right now. He may have his mind set on it too, but I feel like she's probably being a little distracted by that energy. And he says, don't hold back, jump in and give me all of you set the pace so I can too. So again, I'm getting that energy of you've held back with this person because of the in and out or because you haven't had enough time to get to know them on the level that you would feel comfortable enough to be like doing those things that you, you know, usually don't do right off the bat, you know, giving this person that um, attention and that time with them that you want to give but they, they want you to not hold back with them. And I feel like in order for that to happen, they need to show up more. And then you say, I know I probably seem crazy. I can't help it. My heart and emotions are invested in you. So, you know, whatever's happened here, it's like sometimes you may feel crazy. They may even look at you like you've been a little crazy. But it's because you've, you, you've invested into this person on a deep soul level and you care about this person. And he says, I'll be calling you soon. Leave the phone on. And she says, every time you come and go, it gets a little bit easier to let you go. But you always come back right at the moment I'm about to move on. How do you know? So she could be at this time right now where it's like she's thinking about this like sexual stuff with him, wanting to get all these things going on. But every time she starts to think about, all right, you know what? He's not showing up. He hasn't shown up. He's not coming back. It's time for me to move on. It's like he starts getting to this energy of like, I'm calling, here I come. So it's almost like he knows and then they may reset this whole thing and come back together and get physical and, you know, have a night of passion or a couple of days of things are good between us and then all of a sudden he disappears again and it's like he just kind of keeps resetting this process with her. So she's like, every time you come and go, it's a little bit easier for me, but it's, it's not... It's like you know on some level he knows that she's going to be moving on. So he comes back around to prevent that from happening. So let's see what goes through with the divine timing. Um, seconds tick by. Stop watching the time. Obsessed and repressed. So if you've been sitting around watching the clock, like when is he coming? When is he coming? That's going to push it off. So just know that. And then we have when gifts are placed under the tree, expect extra company. So this is like the Christmas card. So it could be around Christmas time. This person shows up in your life, um, you know, and that's when the opportunity or the door opens 
They're saying, what are you waiting for? Open the door opportunity. I feel like there'll be an opportunity around Christmas for the two of you to reconnect on a deeper level. There could be the opportunity that you've been waiting for because they're saying stop and look around. All you want will be found. So it could be around Christmas time. Everything you've wanted with this person is finally there. And it may manifest slowly over the time, you know, that from now till then you could start talking to them soon. And then by Christmas, it's like you guys are in a pretty steady relationship. Things are good. But they're saying when warm winds blow, that's when you'll know. So right now, warm winds are blowing. Summer is here. I feel like there is something that's awakening, something that you need to pay attention to. Um, it's a time where you're collecting all of your things, you know, preparing yourself. They're saying as you collect eggs in a basket, prepare yourself or blow a gasket. So this is um, Easter energy, but I feel like this is more so just telling you like right now is the time to prepare yourself. And for some of you, they may be back, but honey, they whack. Like you may want to look at have they been deceiving you, you know, not for all of you, but for some of you, if there's been a lot of confusion, if there's been a lot of depression, a lot of darkness, there's been a lot of like third party bullshit and a lot of illusions and things that aren't good for you, it may be time for a change. This could be a catalyst into something better for you. When you realize your fears and have a consciousness shift, you may have a change of mind and realize that this was somebody that was meant to awaken you to the whole concept of twin flames. Maybe it was just something that was going to prepare you for a true twin flame and for a shifting of timelines to meet wholeness and completion and have an ending, which is also a beginning, which is one and the same, coming into a time of oneness with a true divine masculine that's going to bring you balance. So their absence brings balance. Expect an upgrade within the decade. For some of you, you could get a whole new twin flame. You know what I mean? Like a whole new person that you may have thought you know, you may have thought that this was the one or that this was the person you were meant to be with, but as you keep working on yourself and staying motivated, you may realize that it was never meant to be with this person and that there is something ending here and a new beginning happening. But for others of you, it may just be that, you know, never stop working on yourself, get yourself together, let this cycle close, know that their absence brings balance, that you guys are figuring out what you need to do. And just like that, they will be back. Your divine masculine will come back around to shift the timelines and, you know, no longer deceive you, no longer come in and mess things up or have all these illusions and depression and confusion. So it's like when you get clear, they get clear. When you prepare, they prepare. And that's when things change between the two of you and come into a good alignment. So it's either that you guys are meant to awaken and come into alignment with each other and have a good opportunity open up between the both of you or, you know, there's something here that was like a catalyst and it may, you know, by Christmas time, you'll find that you have a whole new divine masculine in your life that's going to give to you what you were meant to have. It could be that upgrade within the decade with somebody that's the next level of amazing and awesome sauce for you. All right. But either way, stop counting the digits, stop waiting, you know, stop being impatient about this and just know that you'll know soon. Okay, with warm winds blow, that's when you'll know. And if again, if you're impatient, you're going to put this off. But if you're patient, just like that, they'll be back. So you'll figure out whether it's the person that's, you know, that's been deceiving that you've got to let go of. Because that can be a toxic thing where somebody like just shows up because they feel you're moving on and they don't really care about you. It's just that like they don't want you to move away from them. Um, or it could just really be that they're physically, energetically connected to you and they can feel it and they don't want to lose you. So you're going to have to decide, is it them, you know, causing more illusion or is it them, you know, just being confused at this time? You know, are they deceiving you or are they, you know, really soul connected to you? And it's time for a beginning and an ending of shifting wholeness, completion, oneness into this connection um, with your, you know, divine masculine. All right. So hopefully that made sense to you guys, because it definitely feels like there's a mixture of you out there. Some of you are dealing with a deceiving person that will, you know, be cleared away so a good one can come in. And some of you have just been deceived by the energies and by fears and by, you know, illusions. And once that is cleared away, you guys will be good and can come together for, you know, your divine alignment for your twin flame 1111 union. But I think it will be different for each of you. And you know in your soul, you know, if this is good for you or not. So go within and ask, you know, is this person just deceiving me or is this person truly something that, you know, I 
have this spiritual connection with? Is it time for me to move on and go out on a date? Or is it time for me to wait and, you know, sit, sit around waiting for this new dawn between the two of us? But either way, they're saying the years will pass and you will last. No matter what happens over these next few years, things will last. Like, you will be fine. You'll have the stamina you need. And um, dreams will reveal what is true and who is real. So if you've been confused about should I let this all go or is this really my twin flame, pay attention to your dreams because they will let you know. Like, if your masculine starts showing up in your dreams, it's probably to show you that there is a divine connection here. But if in your dreams they're showing up and being assholes and doing horrible things, then it may show you that it's time for a rebirth, you know. Um, when darkness is fighting to overcome light, expect the rebirth of death into life. If you've been out of alignment, you'll see it within your dreams, and that will reveal to you the truth. But in a month's time, you'll see the light shine, so just know that you'll have that clarity very soon um, with the warm winds blowing, and within a month, you'll be illuminating and figuring out what's out of alignment, whether it's you or or them, um, or both of you just being out of alignment within the connection, and then you'll have that rebirth and all the stamina that you need to keep this protected, or to move on and go out on a date with somebody new that's going to be, you know, the right person, but this will be the year that it's all clear, so you'll figure it out, okay, and if you're exhausted, take a break, don't keep thinking about it, don't keep trying to figure it out, just take a break, and let yourself feel what you're supposed to feel, and know what you're supposed to know when you're supposed to know it. And for those of you that they're meant to come, when you do that, it's like you'll speed up this energy of them coming back into your life, okay? So I'm going to move on to number three. But thank you very much. In your name, namaste. Okay, we're going to move on at 3636. And we have Divine Masculine Confessions and Divine Feminine Confessions. we got a bunch of confessions. All right. So masculine says, I lied to you, and I'm sorry. This motherfucker lied to you, and they are sorry about it. Now, this could be that they flat out lied to you and were like, you know, whatever. I don't have a girlfriend, and then you find out they do, or, um, you know, like, whatever. Like, I, I'm six foot ten, and they're only six foot, you know, whatever. They could have flat out lied to you. Or they could have acted like they didn't care when they do care. So it could have been a lie on like a different level where it was like they didn't flat out say a lie, but there is like a lie within their actions or a lie within the way that they feel. And she says, I get so upset sometimes I can't even think straight. So I feel like because this person's lied to you or because they haven't acted right, it's made you get upset. It's made you be like, rah. I can't even think straight, like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you lying to me? Why are you not, you know, showing up the way you should be? And he says, I've closed down my feelings. I quit love. So that could be part of the thing, too, is that he hasn't told you that, like, oh, you know, I just decided to stop being involved in love, but here I come to sleep with you, or here I come to, like, get your hopes up and spend time with you and do things that make you feel like you know, uh, it's going to go somewhere, and then all of a sudden, I've quit love, so that could be part of that lie, and that could be why you get upset, you know, is that you feel like this person's just playing games with you, and she says, I wish I could be more open with you, I've just been abused so badly, it's hard for me to open up fully, so she may want to open up more with this person, but because he comes and goes, because he's been like a ghost, because he's closed down parts of himself, it's been hard for her to open up fully, and because she's been abused by past lovers, maybe physically, emotionally, spiritually, or whatever, um, it could be hard for her to open up all the way anyhow, just because, you know? So it depends on your past, but I feel like it's been hard for you to be able to give to this person everything you want to um, because of partly what they're doing and partly because of what you've been through. And he says, I feel like uh, you deserve way more. So he doesn't even feel like he deserves you, and I feel like that causes an issue here as well, where they push you away because they feel like you deserve better. And she says, beautiful disaster, that's what we are. So she sees this as something that's beautiful, but also a disaster. It's been very difficult. It hasn't been easy to deal with. And she just feels like this has been horrible. You know, it's been very hard for her to, to deal with it. He says... Nights are the worst for me. It's as if all my feelings are amplified. So at nighttime, when he's trying to go to sleep or just spending time on his own, it's like everything's been amplified. All of his feelings are amplified. 
you know, the truth comes to the surface and it's like he wants to be able to say something and see you and feel that connection with you. And she says, my twin flame. So this is most likely your twin flame for many of you. Um, and she, she knows it. The hell is that? Uh, my closet door just banged like somebody was trying to come through it and there's nobody in there. So that was weird. Let me just look for one second. That was really weird. Whatever. Um, maybe there's a monster. So let's see what he has to say. <laughs> um, I do want to get together, have a family, have a home, have all of you forever to call my own. So he does want love. You know, he's like, oh, I've shut down my feelings, but I want it. I want to have a family. I want to be with you. I care about you, but, you know, it's hard for him, I feel like, to really open up and tell you all of that stuff when it comes to, like, the physical world and having a physical connection. And she says, I hate the hot and cold back and forth. So she doesn't like this, you know, oh, I've closed down my feelings, but I love you. Or, I, oh, I don't, I, you know, uh, 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 back and forth crap. She's like, just, just figure out, are you hot or are you cold? Do you want to be here or don't you want to be here? Because I can't take the back and forth anymore. And he says, love scares the shit out of me, but I want it. So again, it's like it scares him, but he wants all of this. He does want to have this stuff together. He does want to be with you. He does, you know, want to open up and let love back in, but he's afraid of it. So he needs to face his fears. And she says, I can't say goodbye. I don't want to give up on you. I see how special and rare you are. So she knows that this is something she's not going to find somewhere down the road. She isn't going to just walk into the bar and be like, oh, here's a new twin flame. Like, this is something that's rare. This isn't something you find every day of the week. And she, so it's hard for her to let go of it. And he says this connection has definitely been divinely guided. So he feels it too. He knows on some level that this has been guided to him. And it's, you know, there's something here that's beautiful. And she says, when you push me away and disappear on me, it really hurts. I want you to have space, but not be gone for good. So when he pushes her away, it pu you know, it really bothers her. It really hurts her. When he just disappears because of these fears, it's like, oh, like, I want you to have space, but I don't want you to just disappear. Just let me know that you need some space. Just let me know that you're freaking out and I'll give you that time to kind of calm down or I'll give you that space to do what you got to do. But I feel like it really hurts her when he just kind of off and disappears. And he says, I have so many fantasies to play out with you. When can we begin? So he does have like fantasies and I feel like it's not just sexual. I feel like he does want to be together. He does want to have a family. He wants to have a home. You know, he wants to have all of those things that most people want to have. Um, but he's like afraid of it at the same time. And then she says, I just want to move far away and start over with you would be ideal. But if I'm never going to have you. I can't stay here anymore. So she could be at this breaking point where she's like, if I'm not going to be with you, I'm ready to just move out of here. Like she could be planning, you know, to move, um, getting things ready, getting, you know, getting ideas together, saving up money, figuring out where she's going to go, looking at houses and new places and, you know, hoping that it could be with him because he does want these things, but maybe it would be easier for him somewhere else than where he's at. But if she's not going to have him, she can't stay where she's at anymore. She can't be close to him or close to wherever she's been that has been connected to him. She wants to move far away and start over. And he says, Twin Flame, um, you're my secret mystery fulfilling every fantasy. So you both have Twin Flame coming through. So this is definitely a Twin Flame connection for many of you. Uh, and I feel like this is something that could fulfill every fantasy for this person. But it's like a mystery to them as well. And she says steamy sexy. So I feel like they both have like a steamy connection with each other. There's a um, very hot and heavy connection between the two of you. There's like a infinite connection here that doesn't go away. But there's also a lot of fears and a lot of frustration at this point. And he says, I'm working my ass off to become the man of your dreams. So I feel like his stuff is he needs to feel valuable. He needs to feel ready to have all of the stuff that he wants to give to you. And she's ready for it now. You know, she's like... I, I just want to do what I'm meant to do. I just want to be where we're meant to be already. Like, stop working on yourself because I already see you as being perfect. Let's just start together because it's easier to work on this stuff together than it is individually. And she says, thank you for always forgiving me. So she may have times where she gets pissed off and, like, does things that she doesn't necessarily want to do or has said stuff or done stuff that, you know, 
comes from a place of anger or frustration. Um, but she says, thank you for always forgiving me. So, you know, whatever's happened between the two of you, I feel like there's unconditional love. I think the two of you forgive each other. Um, we also have seconds tick by, stop watching the time. So if you've been sitting around watching the time in regards to this, it's, it's repressing things. So the more you're obsessed, the more you're repressing the energy. And then with 1111 awakening union, this says pay attention. So, you know, pay attention to the signs and synchronicity and the messages that are coming to you at this time. I feel like this is a time of awakening and healing, you know, figuring out stuff. Um, when the cold winds blow with the first snow winter, I feel like something's going to be going down in winter for you guys with this connection. And they say in divine time, things will align. So there could be something that's going to align for you in the winter time with this person. Um, it could be the shifting of a timeline coming into wholeness and completion. Pay attention to the number 1010 because I feel like that's going to be something significant for this connection. And in a month's time, you will see the light shine and they will be back just like that. So if you're sitting around impatiently waiting for them, shift out of that energy and come into a time of patience. And, and then you'll start to see things shine. You'll start to see things become illuminated and they'll be back just like that. But if you're just impatient, like, ah, it's going to make it seem longer. So you want to make sure that you're not sitting there like very impatient about this connection. And then gather around and raise a glass. Finally found enough time has passed. Thanksgiving celebration. So by Thanksgiving, you could be having the one you miss come for a kiss, being very nostalgic, you know. And this could be your twin flame, your divine partnership, your soulmate, whatever you want to label it. But in their absence brings balance. There's going to be justice that comes during this time away from each other. So there's fears that have been realized, consciousness shift, a change of mind in the beginning and ending of something, okay? But beginnings and endings are one and the same. So it's like bringing you into oneness. So I feel like you're coming to the end of a chapter um, where their absence is, has been felt intensely. And then, you know, the one that you miss will come for a kiss around Thanksgiving, around winter, around that time where it's like you guys have had some time apart from each other to, to shift and come into wholeness and completion. And this is your true twin flame. So remember your story and why you came. So start meditating on why you're here, you know, start remembering the story of past lives that you've already shared because you could be reliving things in this lifetime that you've already been through in another lifetime and know that a year from today you will be on your way. So you'll be in a completely different position a year from today. So try not to sit around feeling like uh, about stuff and start opening the door for opportunities to come so that by Christmas when gifts are placed under the tree, you'll have that extra com company with this person, you know, they'll be there. They're saying stop wasting time, um, balance your mind. So if you've been procrastinating, like trying to figure things out, meditating and looking within instead of just like getting answers given to you through readings, you got to start going within. You got to start healing on a deeper level and start taking those opportunities to figure out what's going on here with this connection so that you can get clear on what you've been confused about, what is true, who is real, what would the time reveal. The time will reveal the answers to you when it's meant when it's meant to reveal that to you but you definitely could be going through some awakening right now light codes coming in you could be star seeds <laughs> i just got 777 which is again more star seed codes so there's definitely stuff coming in um you're being applauded right now there's unconditional love here and i feel like you need to pay attention to the sevens you may be getting a lot of downloads a lot of energy a lot of frequency that's you know shifting you but they're like do you not see you're already free so stop freaking out about this you know, be sure to look around around fall because I think things are going to start shifting then. And they're saying 818 expansion, seeing results, awakening the infinite. So Lion's Gate is um, coming up on 88. That's the Lion's Gate. I feel like that's going to be a time where you start awakening, you know, new results. And then by fall, it'd be time to look around because it's going to be manifesting into the physical world. So when you stop and look around, all you want will be found. But if you are sitting in fear or you're sitting you know, afraid of changing things, then you can't change what's going on here. So there's an ending that needs to happen before a new beginning can start within this connection, you know, so embrace the new codes, embrace the confusion, embrace your freedom that you have right now without this person, allow for the endings to happen because those are just really beginnings and allow for like your fears to be realized, but then shift the consciousness around them 
never stop working on yourself, be motivated to know that a year from today, things will be completely different. And this time away from each other is bringing you balance for a reason. There's something here that needs to be done individually. And then the two of you can come together just like that for your wholeness and completion to shift the timeline. Um, but I think you'll start having clarity within a month if you start going within and paying attention to the signs and the synchronicity. Stop being obsessed and repressing the energies by staring at the clock. And know that by Thanksgiving, for a lot of you, you could have this person back in your life and giving to you what you're wanting. But, you know, time is an illusion, so release that confusion. Don't sit around staring at the clock because that's just going to make things, you know, don't be like, ooh, Thanksgiving, and focus all your time, energy, and attention on that because then you're going to prolong it. And know that it's in the dark you feel the heart. So if you've been depressed, this is a reason, you know, there's a reason for it. It's helping you to reconcile the past. It's helping you to surrender into a new chapter. And in the light of the sun, it will all be done. So I feel like this summer, if that depression can start to lift and your dreams will start to reveal what is true and who is real within this connection. And tomorrow is another day. Try again another way. Don't sit around just doing the same thing over and over and expecting new results. Start trying new things, you know, feeling new ways, meditating, um, going out, having fun, doing what feels right to you and keep ch trying to change things up so that you're not, you know, becoming complacent or living in the same energy over and over and over. All right, guys. So hopefully that made some sense for you. Um, Thank you very much. This was Divine Time Oracle. We had Divine Masculine's Confessions and Divine Feminine's Confessions here. I do have my coupon code DIVINE. It's capital DIVINE, D-I-V-I-N-E, that you can use at checkout to get a deck. And it takes $5 off um, on my Etsy store. Alrighty. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your comments, liking, subscribing. Thank you for those who send donations. You guys are awesome sauce. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everybody buying my products and my decks and everything like that. You guys are amazing. Make it possible for me to keep doing this. I am exhausted. I'm a little slow right now. I'm like a day behind on um, my private stuff. And I took down my 911 re readings until I'm ready to put those back up right now just because I can't keep up with everything. Um, but I will put them back up soon, and I will probably be caught back up tonight um, to my regular sessions, okay? So, in Renee, namaste.